Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And uh, I'm going to do a little spike forging demonstration for y'all on how to make my style of bottle opener from a railroad spike. Not cutting off anything, grinding anything, and it can all purely be done with basic blacksmithing tools. So I'm going to get this spike in the fire, and I'm going to show you the first step. Alright, see you in a minute. Now we're not cutting anything off of this. I'm going to start laying the head flat. Here it goes. Start on the back here where it's got that little overlap. I wouldn't worry too much about that tiny coal shut. Not for this purpose. So it starts getting kind of dull, put it back in. Continue flattening the head. You let your wrist do a lot of the snapping motion. Flatten it a little bit. At the shank of the spike there. Okay, we're developing a good thickness. I'm going to heat it up and uh, we're going to begin punching the hole. See you in a minute. We've got a good bright, semi bright yellow heat on it. So I'm going to take my little handle punch here. You can use a standard punch, but wear a glove and try not to overheat it. Cool your punch. Keep your tools nice and cool. Let me take another strike on it. I'm not going to push it. I'm going to keep enough heat on there to where I can still move the metal rather than move the tool that's trying to move the metal. And uh, you can see it's already made a pretty deep depression and it's starting to flatten out on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this back out just a little bit while I got a little heat still on it. And to keep it from going concave. Back in the fire. All those punched through. That gives you a good starting point to drift the hole out to the size you desire. Here's the little slug. Oop. Oh, I dropped it. Anyway. I 
going to grab this pair of tongs that will actually hold on to it. See if I can't help you look at it. It wasn't too hot when I grabbed it, but it's hard to hold on to. Um, see the little slug? How narrow it is? If you drill a hole, you're wasting a lot more metal than that. And a punched hole is stronger. You can argue that point, but you'll be wrong. Back in the fire. We're going to drift it out. While the steel is heating up, I want to show you this tool. You can see it comes to a fairly sharp point, and it's got a round taper on it, kind of fat. Uh, not too pointy of a point. Uh, this is a 7 8 uh, hex key or Allen wrench. It's actually an Allen brand, so it truly is an Allen wrench. I straightened it and I drew it to a taper and I refined it a little bit. I used this for punching eyes out larger. Uh, you have to anneal the struct in because this tool still is very, very prone to chip. And there's still the evidence of a chip right there. And my father's chin bears the scar from using this to break tile up. Um, so you need this end soft enough to where it'll mushroom and you keep it dressed. Uh, it's very, very important. Any of your struck tools to keep the struck in dressed on your grinder, whatever type of uh, filing or grinding system you have, make sure you keep these ends dressed. Because those little chips can fly off of there with a the velocity of... Uh, probably a 22 caliber bullet and they can impale you and damage you in many ways but anyway this is what I'm using for the drifting process and uh, I'll show you that in just a minute all right all right we're gonna do this over the hardy hole I'm gonna use a little bit bigger hammer because it's cold out and my heat's going away I'll show you what we got in one heat, one drift. Flatten it up a little bit while the heat's there. We've already got a sizable hole. I'd say that's probably about five eighths of an inch. All right, back in. All right, let's get this hole as big as we can get it with the tool that I have. Heat goes away very fast in the cold weather. Notice I whacked my hand. Didn't really hurt. You learn when you miss to hold back a little bit. So, I'm not sure you'd call that a proper drift because it doesn't go all the way through the hole and out through the hardy hole. But it's the tool I have. So I got the hole this big. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat it up and work around the horn of the anvil. And uh, try to get this material spread out into a thinner band. And I'll show you what I do next. I'm going to grab the spike out. And I've made these uh, square jaw tongs out of railroad spikes a great deal of time ago. I was calling them bolt jaw tongs. I was corrected by a viewer. And uh, viewer, I thank you for that. These are square jaw tongs, because they have square jaws. So, let me pull it out of there and I'll show you how I'm working around the nose of the animal. I try to distribute the material uh, based on need. Start the thicker portion. Kind of lay that out. Rotate it. 
rotate it. Keep it kind of uniform, or as best as you can. It takes practice. Starts curling over, keep it flat. You start losing too much heat, get it hot. It's an exercise in patience. And always wear safety goggles when your face is in close proximity to metal you're hammering on. <clears throat> it's a good idea to just wear them all the time when you're forging. Uh, go back in anyway you can see I'm starting to make that hole a little bit larger and uh, reduce the the thickness of that band going around still a little bit thick on this shoulder I'm gonna try to knock that down but I need to put it in for another heat Let's warm that up a little bit, knock it down. All right, we're gonna knock it down now. I'm going to grab it sideways. And I'm going to try to hit it in such a way to where I can get a uniform oblong out of it. It looks pretty good. Lay it flat. Alright, that looks pretty good. And uh, what I have to do is I have to punch a tab in here. So let's heat it back up. Now what I've got here is a 5 16 punch. Uh, one of the few store-bought items that I use. And I keep it dressed, of course. And I'm going to use that to push the metal out to a little tab that can grab the bottle top. Uh, for opening pop bottles and whatnot. And uh, you can see it's very short. So I have to shield my hand from the heat. I will wear a glove during using this. And uh, I'll show you exactly what I do to get that tab pulled out. See you in a minute. I want to try to get center on it. Let it kind of skip off. Push that metal back into a little tip. Now 
and I'll show you what I got by doing that. You can see, um, well, you can't really see it real well, but there's a little stair step. There you go. Or the punch has moved the metal out into this tab. And uh, the tab is pretty much flush with the, the reverse side of the opener. And I guarantee you this will open any kind of capped uh, soda bottle or uh, adult beverage bottle. You can stop here, but we're not going to. I'm going to show you how to uh, make this more decorative. And uh, if this is all you want to do to it, you can market these items. And they still look like a spike, but uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do to make this a little more decorative. We're going to chisel some center lines in the four facets. One. Let me just rascal over to see if we can get two out of one heat. <coughs> Not looking promising. It's cold out here. Well, we got two. All right, back in. Not necessary to do this, but it makes a prettier twist in my mind, so... Losing my heat playing around with this thing. I don't go all the way to the tip because I want to take that tip and draw it into a little hanging hook for it. Alright, there's a line. I'm going to put it back in the fire get it hot. Looks all right. I'll deepen it just a little bit. Your chisel having a curved edge, an arc, helps. You can kind of see how I'm rocking it.
All right, next is the twist. I'll pan the camera so you can see me twist it in the vise. I hope that the, uh, the view is good, but you can see what I've done. I've made a uh, faint chisel line on all four sides of the spike. Now I'm going to twist that, and that will enhance the look of the twist. All right, see you in a minute. Time to bring it out. Done. Take a wooden mallet. Straighten your twist. And there you go. There's your twist. Alright, see you in a minute. Drawing the hook now. So you see what I'm doing, I'm drawing that into a taper so I can curl it around and make a hook to hang it by. Here it goes. That'll do. See you in a minute. One more heat than the curl.
that'll work it'll hang on something might make it a little more circular but this is for demonstration purposes only touch mark time Drop forge time. All right. Got my touch mark ready. One hard hit. Good deal. Now we're going to quench this. We'll take a little boiled linseed oil, give it a nice finish. Helps prevent rust. Notice I did that when it was quenched enough to where the oil would smoke but not burn. That's what you want. Alright, see you in a minute. Well, here's the finished bottle opener. Got a place to hang it. Place for opening. Uh, got the nice chiseled twist on it. And I'm going to show you how it opens a bottle. Here's a bottle. very easy that shape is absolutely ideal so I hope you glean something from this and I hope you can learn how to make these because they seem very popular and uh, until next time bye